author John C. Maxwell says one of the greatest values of a mentor is the ability to see ahead what others cannot see and to navigate a course to their destination. Welcome to the Meet Your Mentor TV show. My name is Daniela Iduasari and I'm excited to be your host. The Meet Your Mentor TV show is a television program for youth across Africa. It's an initiative that provides the youth the knowledge, the skills and the experience needed to build a career. Today, we have one of Ghana's phenomenal entrepreneurs. Uh, he's a member of the G20, which is a huge thing. He led Ghana's delegation uh, to get $10 million for the Ghana Open Data Initiative. But right after this break, we'll get the chance to interact with our mentor. We'll be right back. You're welcome back from that break. If you're as excited as I am to host our honorable mentor for today, please help me welcome Mr. Isaac Agri. You're welcome to the Meet Your Mentor TV show. Thank you very Is much. Is this your first time doing anything like this? No, I've done a couple of uh, interviews like this before. Okay, so you're not new. No. <laughs> all right. So first of all, we're curious. Tell yes. us, who's Mr. Isaac Agri? Well, uh, Mr. Isaac Agri wears a lot of hats, but I would say Mr. Isaac Agri is a global citizen, uh, very passionate about transforming lives. Okay. So essentially... Um, That's how you describe yourself. Yes. Right? Okay, yes. so tell us about your educational background. What schools did you go to? Well, I had my secondary education at uh, Agri Memorial Zion Secondary School. Okay. Um, and then university at um, Takwa School of Mines, okay. uh, USD, uh, now Western University. Yes, and then afterwards I moved to South Africa, uh, where I school at the Stellenbosch University. Yes, and then after Stellenbosch University, I moved to uh, Eastern Europe, um, um, I disciplined School of Management. Yes. Okay. You've been to a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, growing up, what did you want to be? Have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur? No, I always say this when I get the opportunity. I actually studied science at um, secondary school. Uh, but when I moved to the university, I, I studied engineering. And actually, I grew up from the mining town. So okay. growing up, you know, uh, seeing gold and diamonds, I was aspiring to be a renowned mechanical engineer, you know, digging for gold and diamonds. But when I moved to South Africa, then it all changed. So I change the, the, the course, yes. What, what, what made you change your mind? Well, actually, I, when I was actually doing my, I think, internship at the mining sector, um, I was moving to the field, you know, mechanical engineers who moved to the field. But then uh, it was very risky and dangerous at the field. Uh, but then you have um, this, those who study business. They are sitting comfortably at the offices, and they were the, the ones making decisions. So at one point, I said, no, I, I need to uh, do some re retrospective and change mm. uh, the course of uh, 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 my vision. So fortunately, when I moved to South Africa, then an opportunity came. I actually went to the community to do a research project. And then when I got there, you know, you know um, um, South Africans are historically marginalized. So you have uh, the men who were not having the skill set to, to, to acquire jobs. So it was the women who actually were the breadwinners uh, of the families. So when I got to the community and I got to hear this story, I, I found that, you know, South Africa got so much wealth. And then on the other side, inequality. So I, I thought of having a model of um, a redistribution of wealth, you know, and it comes with, you know, thinking through uh, um, what you need to have like a project or right. a business model to, 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 to support these women who are um, doing something for the family. So that's, that's where the business thinking came in. And actually, I designed um, um, a, a program, which is a customized design, three-day design program, uh, where it's like a training program where um, I train the women 
um, resource them, empower them, align them with opportunities. So on the first day we do mentoring, like what we're doing here, um, and then we um, actually maximize the potentials, you know, to the advantage. And then on the second day we do business management, where essentially we dig deep into the nitty gritties of business. Um, and then on the third day we do financial literacy, where we bring on board the financial institutions to engage with the women. So it, it became a huge program on its own, yes. Right. Let's talk about South Africa. Yes. You're an honorary member. Yes. You were appointed honorary member of yes. the parliament. Yes. That's a huge thing. Yes. How did that come about? It was through this same program that I did for the women. Um, I started with the, like, 50 women. Mm. And essentially, uh, the government of South Africa heard about it. So I was engaging with some of the departments and the ministries of mm. uh, um, uh, South Africa. And then there was a call for us to, to come up with um, an initiative that will actually cover the entire South Africa where uh, women from all parts of South Africa could come together to also learn about this program because it was like a huge empowerment program yeah. uh, for the women. So we thought through and then we came up with Women in Parliament okay. program. So um, the government of South Africa gave us the parliament where we invited all the women from um, different part of South Africa to emerge in the South African Parliament. So uh, what happened was, I think it was a three day, we were doing it annually, right. but a three day program where uh, normally what we do is that we enact policies that will be in favor of women in terms of procure, uh, secure and procurement mm -hmm. uh, from government and also other opportunities that are there. And uh, by doing that, we came out with the BBEE or something, broad based economic empowerment where if, even if women are at your workplace, you qualify for certain incentives in government and also some, some, some opportunities that are there. So we align, all these, uh, we align all the opportunities that are there in government and other places. And then what we do is that we, 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 we will just match them with the women, especially those who are doing businesses. And also uh, violence against women, you know, home management, and all those things were like policies where we enact uh, for the benefits of, of this woman. Is, yes. is that what won you the award for the um, feminist, bold feminist? Yes, yeah. it, it actually won me a UN award. Okay. Uh, the United Nations also heard about it. Uh, so during the World Economic Forum, I was awarded mm. with an award. Mm. That essentially gave me the, uh, the scholarship of a tune of 50,000 euros to go and study my executive MBA. Where did the money go? Is there <laughs> still some left? <laughs> <laughs> now, it went into my education. Okay. And I, essentially, when you are doing, when you are impacting your community, when you are doing something great, you'll be identified. Mm -hmm. And when you're identified, that's where, um, I mean, you'll be resourced. Because actually, I never thought, it was right. just passionate. I was just passionate yeah. in doing that. I never thought something could come out of it. So many things came out, the, 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 the uh, feminist, um, the World Pause Board mm -hmm. idea came as a result of that. And the UN uh, Millennium Campaign also uh, awarded me for doing such a great job. Yes. How did you feel being recognized like that? Well, it was rewarding, uh, but <laughs> it wasn't easy though. I, I never had it easy because, I mean, you could imagine um, empowering women, uh, resourcing them, aligning them with opportunities so that they can be self-sufficient. It, it wasn't that easy because you, you need to go and look out for stakeholders, right. you know, to come and support the program. And it wasn't easy initially going out and looking for people who could come and, you know, support the program. Uh, but then um, it got to a point I became grossly incapable because I was not having the sufficient right. resources to run the program. But then, because I was passionate about it, I kept on, I never gave up, and um, eventually, I got the awards and, 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 and the motivation. So for me, it was rewarding, um, and, and I got so excited. I mean, it was, it was, it was just great. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure it was more difficult even because um, with your background, you could have, you know, as you said, gotten a lot of money yes. being in the mining industry. Yes, yes. Um, but you decided that this was what you wanted yes. to do. Yes, And that must be rewarding when yes. you were finding it. Yes. So you were also a speaker at the EUY 20? Yes. Right. Yes. You gave, uh, so in about three minutes, tell us 
what you spoke to them about? Yeah, so the EU Y20 is European Union U20, which is also part of the G20, the, the youth group of the G20. Oh, right. So I was invited to actually talk about um, entrepreneurship, innovation, and job creation. Uh, but then um, coming back home, you know, after my executive MBA, I thought of com coming back home to impact uh, the community also. But when I came to Ghana, it wasn't, also, it wasn't about the women. It was about the youth group, where I found that um, there's so much potential. But then the question is, how do you maximize this potential to your advantage as, as youth? Uh, what I found out that there was human and resource constraint mm. in the system. There were not so much incentives created. So as for you, it's just finishing school and acquiring a job. You know, that's, that's what I found, you know. So for me, it was to talk about how do we maximize youth potential to the advantage. And there was three things. The required or requisite skills that are needed for the job market right. or even to start something of your own. And then the awareness to know that if there are opportunities that are there or resources that you can lay your hands on in order um, to, to, to scale if you have to start a business. And then the third is the investment uh, that are supposed to be there. Because naturally, you, like I said, you wouldn't think about going to entrepreneurship after no. your parent has spent so much money yeah. on you. You think about acquiring a job, but the question is, what job? And who is supposed to create that job for you to go into? So there was a need for, to raise that awareness and advocate for entrepreneurship and also innovation and also job creation. And it's all about maximizing the youth potential to the advantage. But then again, once they have the required skills to move into uh, businesses, what are the opportunities or the investment that are there also for the youth? So I did so much by advocating that we need to set up some form of um, awareness and also um, um, some form of an investment for the youth across, across Africa, where after school, you have the opportunity to tap into this investment to start something of your own. I've always been against the curriculum that we have at our schools because um, it doesn't really prepare the person you know, for the future of work. Uh, the youth need to be, I heard the headmaster talking about uh, preparing and equipping, right. and that's what I'm really passionate in. So what are the needed skills? Now we're talking about robotics, we're talking about AI, we're talking about uh, um, a whole lot of things, right? The internet, you know? But do the youth pass through all these you know, programs before graduating? You know, so when they come out, they, you become handicapped, right? Even in the job market, they are looking for this skill set that you must have before they can even employ you. And I, I heard even on the radio recently, somebody saying that the university and all those, uh, right. you know. So we really need to, 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 to have an introspective as to designing of our curriculum. Let's, let's open up and engage, you know, other stakeholders, civil society, the media, you know, academia. Let's all come together and think through about designing a curriculum, for, for, especially for the next generation, the youth, you know, so that once you are out of school or you graduate from school, you have a certain skill set that are needed in the job market, or even by yourself, you can start something of your own. So essentially, that's something that, and, and I mean, I'm very passionate about this, that this is something that we really need to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about my kids yeah. and the next generation. What, what, how are they going to lead? So clearly, the problems we have with the educational system are structural. Yes. But what can we do as individuals in the meantime that the structure hasn't been corrected to make sure that we have the necessary skills needed for the appropriate jobs? Uh, well, I believe, um, like I said before, um, goods and services are converging and are moving from the physical space into the digital space. So as individuals, I think individuals must be self-driven uh, to be aware of what, what is going on globally. I heard the headmaster also talking about how the students need to be competing globally. Uh, so um, 
the youth need to be prepared and equipped for the future of work. Uh, we're talking about robotics, we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about, you know, technology, you know. So um, that's something that as individual, um, like the youth, they need to really um, get themselves out there and learn, do a lot of research, and also um, get to know what is going on around the globe. So I believe uh, by so doing, they themselves will have to, even if the government is not doing it, they themselves can be equipped or prepared for the future of work. Right, yes. you talk, so you, you touch on technology. Yes. Let's talk about uh, leading Ghana's delegation to get $10 yes. million dollars yes. for the Ghana Open Data Initiative. Yes. In the first place, what's the Ghana Open Data Initiative? Well, the, essentially, um, data sets are collected from ministries, departments, and agencies onto a certain portal where um, uh, citizens can access, you know, in a format where citizens can access free of charge. Uh, we believe that uh, data held by the public sector has a potential of transforming lives, uh, as well as it present also provides important raw material even for uh, businesses and also startups. Uh, in a way of opening up new innovative markets, you know, we talk about um, content and application. It's now delivered online. So uh, civil societies, once the portal is up and running, civil societies are able to track government expenditures, right? right. The media, um, you know the consequences of relying on wrong data, right? So once you have accurate data sets on the portal, in terms of your reportage, you could use that. And then uh, we come to the developers, right? Developers could use it to do meaningful things. We have applications, right? For instance, um, let's say we, 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 we want to know the nearest hospitals that are around here, right. and somebody develop an app, right? Essentially, everybody will be interested in downloading the app, right? And that is actually the emerging technology that is, that is there now, that developers or even the youth could make a lot of revenues, generate a lot of revenues from it. The academia could use that for research purposes, right? So essentially, we have, we have so much data lying out there within our department agencies, you know, uh, and ministries, mm. but converting them, right? right, and making them in a format that could be accessed, you know, by citizens. Mm. Then, I mean, elsewhere, you know, that's what they are using to generate a lot of revenues, you know, in the economy, you know. So we could equally do the same, and that's why we started the Ghana Open Data Initiative uh, from 2012. And then from 2014, we made a presentation to the World Bank, and the World Bank uh, funded the, 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 the project, right. yes. Okay, so tell us, you've, you've given us a lot um, of insight into what you've done. Yes. What are the values that drive you as an individual? Well, the values, um, I'm self-driven, you know, focus, um, self-motivated, result-oriented. Um, I try my best to become the best version of myself, any opportunity that I get, you know. So, um, creative and very innovative, um, and like goal-oriented, yes. Right. Yes. So, um, how do you approach risk? Well, risk is inevitable, such as failure. Um, but whenever I have to approach risk, I ask myself this question. What is the worst scenario that could happen, you know, um, so that I could take calculated steps right. in approaching the risk? But the higher the risk, the higher the returns. So <laughs> I, I love taking risks, yes. Right. Yes. So um, what has been your biggest failure so far, and how did you learn from it? Well, like I said, uh, failure is also inevitable. Mm. At one point in your life, um, you're a human. You will fail. Yeah. So I've failed a couple of times, uh, but you know you become better at failing. Um, if you don't know how to swim, 
and you fail at swimming, you become better after you fail. After drowning. After drowning, yes. After, <laughs> <laughs> after drowning. In exams, I failed my exam before. Don't think I'm a superhuman. I'm not. Oh, you have? Yes. Which paper was that? Um, no, at secondary school. Okay. Uh, what happened to me was that um, I decided to stay behind during vacation to study, mm -hmm. to do the exam. Uh, and I got pneumonia oh. uh, during the, the exam. So I failed. I failed my secondary education. But I tried to rewrite, and it, it wasn't that well. Mm. You know, so, but when I went to the university, you know, I told myself, look, this is it. You know, because it, at JHS, I had aggregate six. I had one, 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 one. And secondary school, I failed. So at university, I said, no, this is not going to happen to me again. So I had distinction, you know, in, 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 in one of the major courses in the university. And then, you know, that's what made me to mm. further my education as well. So failure in my business, my first business, I wasn't that prepared. I wasn't ready. So I even failed. You know, I opened an, an internet cafe. Um, it wasn't the best, you know. But once you fail, you become better. Right. And you, ha you must have this at the back of your mind that uh, you, be, you, you must always aspire to become the best version of yourself, you know, after mm -hmm. even you fail. So. Right. I'm sure you've probably hinted at it, but what's, what's um, the most valuable lesson you've learned in your entire uh, career? That's why I'm saying you become better uh, once you fail, right? And to me, you, I'm a self-motivator. So right. uh, whenever I fail, I don't keep myself down. I don't get intimidated by the failure. Mm. I move on. You know, like I said, what is the, the worst that could happen is death. You know, so once you have life, there are opportunities out there. You fail at one thing, you move on to the next, right? Like I said, at one point in your life, you will fail. That right. one is inevitable. But the question is, will you remain or you get back up? And for me, I'll choose the latter. Right. I'll get back up and I'll move on. Yes. Great. So you were recognized as visionary by yes. the Global uh, Citizen Institution. Yes. When was that? Well, it was two. Uh, 2017, 2018, yes. Okay. Yes. What was that about and how did you feel? Well, also rewarding, you know, like I said, I tried to become the best version of myself. So moving from um, the UN award to become visionary for global citizen, the global citizen actually like the global community where you work with other global leaders, you know, in making the world a better place right, the planet, a better place, like fair, equal, and of course, sustainable, mm. right? So essentially, you must think through or have a, um, a vision or policies, right? So what, what I do is that I take a lot of actions and I push this action to the global leaders, like um, presidents of, mm -hmm. of different countries. And I push that education must be compulsory and free, right. you know? And once I'm a global, uh, global citizen and also a global leader, they will listen. So I sent emails and I pushed through. I had, before I became like an advocate, you know, and then you move on to different levels before the visionary is the last reward that you get, you know. So by pushing, I took a lot of action, like thousands of, thousands of actions, trying to pressure, you know, uh, bring pressure to bear to these global leaders or presidents across the world to make education compulsory free, uh, health, you know, health issues, right. when it comes to sustainable development goals, the 17 goals, I try to push um, 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 my way and try to insist that these are the policies that are needed to essentially make the welfare equitable and also sustainable. So that's by taking action, that's what uh, gave me the, that reward. Mm. And again, passionate about it. It wasn't about anything, but just passionate about it. So it's just rewarding. And it actually motivates me to do more mm. as well. Yeah. So you are really just about making lives better? Yes, yes. I'm sure you're excited about free education. Of course, uh, by the initiative by the government. Mm. Yes, and right. applauding for doing that. 
Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've been interacting with one of Ghana's phenomenal entrepreneurs, Mr. Isaac Agri. Right after this break, we have a lot more. Stay tuned. You're welcome back. This is the Meet Your Mentor TV show. My name is Daniela Eduasare and I'm your host. We're still interacting with Mr. Isaac Agri, who is really big on technology. How yes. did that happen? Well, I mentioned before, data um, has become the essential commodity. Right. And now it's actually the new oil. Mm -hmm. So for me, data mining um, is key to me. I mean, that's why I even supported the Ghana Open Data Initiative. Think different, right? Think different. And be aware of whatever. Think beyond your horizon, right? Um, for, in order for you to compete globally. I know some people are here who aspire to even go beyond the borders of Ghana. Right. But the question is, are you going there um, to become a tourist or to just study or to just acquire money or wealth and then come back? No. You need to leave something. You know, your name should be a hallmark. You know, you need to create a change. You need to create a transformation, right? You need to change lives, you know? So you, 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 you heard a lot of names. Kwame Nkrumah, you've heard uh, 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 Mandela, you've heard um, even ministers, governments, and you know, change agents. What are you leaving? What, what will people say when you die? Would they say, oh, he, he is one of the person, like, when you go to the cemetery, you see a lot of uh, uh, dead bodies. You ask yourself, will you die? And then they said, oh, he, he was just, he, 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 he was born this age and died this age, just like that. <laughs> or people remember you for something that you did, the impact that you created in the world, the transformation that you brought, something that you initiated that changed a lot of lives, that impacted lives. So for me, that's what I tell them, you know. And then, of course, what subjects and courses that you need to, to, to actually do. Actually, they, when they come, we have, uh, I have a questionnaire, and then they them, so allow themselves to talk. And by talking, you identify certain loopholes, and then you try to um, help them in filling those loopholes. Mr. Isaac Agri, yes. we're really grateful that you could join us on the show. We've Thank truly you. been inspired by your stories and uh, your advice. I personally will start giving a lot more attention to technology and how I can maximize it. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we're truly grateful that you could join us. If you're out there watching us on TV, you can follow the social media handles and drop your questions as well. We'll definitely get back to you. Thank you all so much. Thank you to the entire crew. Thank you to you for watching us. Thank you to you for joining us. We'll be back same time next week. My name is Daniela Eduasari. This is the Meet Your Mentor TV show. See you next week.